Hello, this is Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Today I'm joined by Douglas Macquarie, President and CEO of Asante Gold. Delighted to go and meet you, Douglas. Likewise, Andrew. Thank, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak to you. Excellent. Uh, um, for our viewers who aren't familiar with Asante Gold, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Okay, Asante Gold is totally focused on gold exploration and development in Ghana, West Africa. Uh, we've got a lot of experience in the country. Uh, we've had quite a bit of success in the country. And so, uh, you know, uh, keep, keep doing what you do well. That's, that's, that's the Asante story. There's a, a heck of a team we've assembled and we've recently made a major acquisition of a, uh, what we call as a sleeping giant, a, a, a very large ore body that really hasn't been mined since 2005. So we're in the process of uh, uh, rehabilitating the mine and heading to production. So we're, we're, we're aiming for production. That's our story. Yep. And um, with that, I presume you're obviously referring to the acquisition of the Bibiani mine that obviously happened a couple of uh, weeks ago. When do you aim for that to go into production? Yeah, we're aiming for the third quarter of next year, third quarter 2022. So we have uh, awarded an EPCM contract. Uh, we have... Uh, 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 probably 50 people on site now commencing the rehabilitation of the mill and uh, we have uh, exploration underway we've got drills turning and geophysics to uh, to outline additional resources so it's a very intense program to uh, to wake up this three million ton per annum uh, uh, processing facility yeah what is Ghana like as a mining jurisdiction Ghana's a Ghana's a great place. It's uh, you've heard the saying, Ghana is Africa for beginners. <laughs> you know, it's uh, stuff stuff works. So the infrastructure is there. There's huge local expertise. Um, we have three Ghanaians on our board of directors, all top people. Uh, the infrastructure is good. Uh, it's not the cheapest country in the world as far as uh, taxes and royalties. However, they're doable. The uh, social model works there. The, uh, the, the infrastructure works. Power is there. We're right on the main power line between uh, the coast and Kamazi. Uh, there's gas power line. There's gas pipelines in the vicinity. We've got fiber optic cable to our mine site. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an it's a easy place to do business. Mm -hmm. um, you, you talked a little bit earlier about you've got a very experienced uh, team. Can you just talk us a little bit about the experience of your team, both on the uh, management side, but also perhaps on the technical side as well? Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll start with, well, myself. I'll, uh, I'm, I'm the former uh, CEO of PMI Gold. That turned into, that was bought by Keegan, that turned into a, uh, to in, into a Sanko, and then that turned into Galliano. So uh, being, being in Ghana since 1993, uh, I'm an explorationist. I like finding gold ore bodies. Our, our, our independent director, Malik, Malik Isa, is the uh, former executive director of Cardinal. And so, you know, he, he was the, the main driver behind uh, finding, drilling off and putting into, well, and, and sell, selling to Shandong Gold, the Cardinal mine for close to 600 million Australian dollars. That, that transaction closed just, I think, about six months ago. And uh, so Mal Malik joined us. And uh, we also have Paul Abbott. Paul Abbott is a uh, exploration geologist, again, credited with the discovery of, uh, of the Cardinal project. He's been in Ghana again, going back, I don't know, almost 30 years before I got to Ghana. And uh, is just a super exploration geologist. We're, we're, we the, the, the team, the three uh, g g uh, main people I just mentioned, have had incredible success on finding ore bodies and developing them in Ghana. So that's the team uh, that's sort of leading our exploration. On, on, on the operations side, uh, our director, Bashir Ame, he's the former uh, mine manager at Obuasi. So, you know, he had like a thousand people working for him underground. Mm -hmm. He's a super underground miner, knows everything about it. And of course, as we move into Bibiani, uh, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, it's got spectacular underground potential. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll, you know, Bashir's expertise will come to play on that. We've recently added a fellow named Dave Anthony. He's the former chief operating officer for Barrick Gold. He was responsible for putting three mines in production in Tanzania 
for uh, for Barrick. So he'll be the, the chief operating officer. And uh, he's got this tight timeline of nine months to get the, the mill up and running and uh, or going uh, in, into the, the crusher. Uh, under him, we've got a project manager named Evan Swanpool. He's the former, uh, basically, uh, manager of the Asanko operation. He, he left that operation a few months ago and joined us. We're very, very happy to have him. Uh, we've also got uh, Walter uh, Agby. He's the former process uh, manager at Asanko. And so he's come across to us as well. So uh, Walter actually worked on the Bibiani plant when it was first built by Ang uh, Ashanti Goldfield. So he's, he's, he's sort of coming home to his own mill. Yeah. So he knows exactly how it works. And that, the really neat thing about this, Andrew, is we're, the, the, the risk profile on Asanti compared to some other operation where you haven't put ore through it before and you're not mm -hmm. quite sure about the metallurgy and you're not quite sure about uh, so many things. Th th those, those risks are all out of this project. We're gonna, we're gonna just wake up an old mine. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, you know, yeah. it's quite, quite a fantastic uh, opportunity here. Yeah. Um, so in terms of risks, I guess, what could like what could go wrong? I mean, and me just like thinking out <laughs> aloud is is like, is, is I mean, to what extent are you beholden to the price of gold? I mean, is that like a potential risk or have you got quite low all in sustaining costs? Well, that's a good point. We, 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 we can't get to that economic number until we we fill in all the necessary uh, schedules and reports. Mm -hmm. We figure that's about four months down the road. Okay. So uh, we're, we're currently, we've brought in uh, outside consultants to do the uh, pit slope stabilities. So we're, we're thinking an open pit model here uh, to get started. Um, the mine was shut down in 2005. There's lots of ore at, at the bottom of the pit. But the gold price at that time did not allow uh, for the expansion of a pit. It's a very similar story with the Obatan project I picked up for PMI. Mm -hmm. You know, Resolute, you know, just couldn't couldn't raise the capital at the low gold price in 2006. And this is a very very similar story. Well, the gold price is three times higher now. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, all all gold operations are very sensitive to gold price, as you state. But this one is going to be one of the highest grades. Uh, the, the, the indicated grade at the moment is over three grams per ton. Okay. So this will be one of the, you know, yeah, uh, you know Goldfields is working at around a one gram or one and a half. As well, Sanko is working at one, one, one and a half. Uh, Ian Furry uh, Edikin is working at one, around one gram. This is three. Yeah. So I think we got lots of room uh, on, on, on that. Obviously, high gold prices are nice. Obviously, yes. And once, and, and just as one last question, once Bibiani mine goes into production, what's kind of next on the horizon for Asante Gold? Would you look to do more acquisitions? Would you look to grow outside of Ghana? Would you have plans to get to go into JVs, or what's going kind of next after that? I think I think if you look at our team, our team has been involved in finding, developing twenty four million ounces of gold directly. Mm -hmm. Um, we think, I, I think, and I'll talk for myself, Bibiani is a 10 million ounce deposit. The past production is between four and five billion ounces, goes back a hundred years. Mm -hmm. Our body is two kilometers long. Mm -hmm. It's being tested down to 800 meters and there's no reason for it to stop. The, the typical Ghanaian gold deposits go down to two, three kilometers. So a 10 million ounce potential, we're, we're talking a very, very large mine. We have our Kubi project, and that could be, that's only a two hour, uh, two and a half hour uh, truck away, truck uh, drive away. So we can certainly make our Kubi project, which has near surface uh, mineralization, 350,000 ounces of resources. We can certainly make that a satellite pit. We have six other projects at the moment and another uh, probably eight coming in. And uh, because we have roughly 35% of our shares in Ghana held by Ghanaians. Um, you know, we have, we have sort of have an inside track to an awful lot of Ghanaian opportunities that I think other companies don't have. So to answer the question, I think Ghana is a, a wonderful place. We've got great roots there and great connections. So I think we're gonna grow there for a while yet. Good, excellent. Well, you've kind of taught me a new saying today, Ghana is Africa for beginners. Um, and I've certainly become very, very interested in the in Asante Gold. That was Douglas 
Macquarie, President and CEO of Asante Gold with Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Thank you, Andrew.